Summer is a beautiful time for the Northeast. The oceans are one of the biggest highlights for the employees of the Northeast delivery industry. Holiday makers have so much to see and do. There are trips to the seaside, balloon rides in Little Bark Grove, and taking trips to Anderson Lakeside. Everyone always has something fun to do. This also goes for the employees as well. They try to do fun things themselves, such as other work. Some of the toys find their work pretty fun depending on what they do. One night, somewhere in Maine, the toys were having a fire at one of the campgrounds in Maine. Bulgy likes to tell the other toys scary stories when he's near the fire. So be warned of the scrap monster. He looks for toys such as us. The scrap monster is very dangerous, I tell you. He hides in corners and takes any engine or anything else he can. And then he melts them in the scrap yards. Oh my god, that was scary. I don't think I've ever heard a scarier story than that. Phew, at least that story's fake though. The toys thought a scary story would be enough, but Bulgy had other thoughts for many nights. What Bulgy did was, he would get pieces of iron, attach it to himself, and then give the others a spook. He would hide in bushes, and then go boo at everyone who was working the night shift. This happened to many of the employees working the night shift. Unfortunately, Bulgy's idea to scare everybody would bite him back. It got so bad that the next day, all the toys gathered around at the campground. Bulgy has been taking things too far, if you ask me. You're right, Scar Louie. Things have gone too far, if you ask me as well. Bulgy clearly doesn't know the Great Western way. Oh, here we go again from season one. Oh, come on, can we not break the fourth wall again? The crews were also very angered as well. They wanted to get Bulgy back especially. Just then, Sunil walked up to the gang. So Bulgy has been spooking you too, eh? I know how to get back at Bulgy, and you guys can help me as well. Merlin was supposed to take a long express train to Rock Bark Rocks, but it turns out he has broken down and is having mechanical difficulties. And Bulgy has to take the train, and he has to take it at night, and he doesn't like taking trains at night. Bulgy whispered the plan to everybody. The whole team agreed with Sunil's idea. This is a splendid idea. I will go let the old chap know about Merlin. Harold took off to let Bulgy know about Merlin. It wasn't long till Harold found Bulgy at the Atlantic Oceanfront Beach. Harold slowly came in for a landing. Bulgy was rather surprised to see Harold. Hello, old chap. Merlin has broken down. Would you be able to take his coaches to the Rock Bark Rocks concert? And what if I don't? Well, you're going to have to answer to the yard manager if you don't. Bulgy could not believe he had to do this work. What a to bollocks? Ah. I'm gonna have to go then. Merlin's coaches and some other coaches were coupled at the campgrounds. Merlin saw Bulgy pulling in to collect the coaches. 
Beware of the Scrapple Monster, Bulgy. Don't let him get you. I can take care of myself, you big purple buffoon! The train had to be in push-pull configuration on the way to Rock Park Rocks. Then Bulgy would lead the way on the way home. Bulgy hated being in push-pull mode. Bulgy picked up the passengers, and then they set off to Rock Bark Stadium. The Rock Bark Rocks concert was a big tradition that is celebrated every year at Rock Bark. More specifically, Rock Bark Stadium. Bulgy was sulking the whole ride. Huh, <laughs> why me? Why me out of all the toys to take the concert train? As Bulgy thundered through Seymour, he saw Scarlowy at the station. Scarlowy glared at Bulgy from behind. Finally, after a half hour, Bulgy and his passengers arrived at Rock Bark Stadium. Bulgy left his coaches and then him, the passengers, and his driver and crew went to see the music. At the stadium, they were playing a bunch of different music from rock to other types of genres of music. Bulgy actually had a pretty good time listening to the music, especially the music he has never heard before. But Bulgy's mood soon changed. After the concert was over, Bulgy coupled up to his coaches and waited for his passengers to board. The other crews of the Northeast delivery industry talked with Bulgy's driver, asking if they could spook Bulgy, and Bulgy's driver agreed, and he could see the plan was working, because Bulgy looked very nervous. And it wasn't long till Bulgy set off home with his passengers. After Bulgy dropped off his passengers, he left the coaches and him and his driver set off home. While on the way home, Bulgy saw some flickering lights in some bushes. They looked like glowing eyes. Bulgy's driver knew it was only duck, but to Bulgy, it looked like a monster of some kind. Oh my god! STEP ON IT, DRIVER! And within seconds, Bulgy was racing in the distance. Duck's driver took off the fake eyes off of Duck. Duck, his driver, and fireman were laughing hysterically. Their plan worked well. A little too well, it worked out. Bulgy never came into work the next day. The toys and others had to do Bulgy's work while he was away for the day. Many thought they scared him so badly that he had to skip work. It wasn't until later that night Bulgy arrived. And he arrived just in time for the fireworks as well. It turns out there was a firework festival going on at the campgrounds, and almost all the employees came to see it. Duck noticed Bulgy right next to him. We were wondering all about you! Oh, hey Duck. Um, the reason why I didn't come in today was because, well, I had a broken axle, but it's fixed now. We were worried that we scared you to death. Oh, you you did, but I would have came in today if it wasn't for my broken axle. Duck, I'm oh, I'm very sorry for the way I was to you guys and spooking you and stuff. I really am. I definitely made a fool of myself. And we are sorry for playing trick on you. How about we call it a truce? Yeah, truce indeed. At least we learned our lessons. 